When we see godlike, amazing players in the pro scene, we're inspired and filled with the desire to become just like them. But these players seem untouchable, as though they're playing on a level that we can't even fathom. And the only explanation we have for this is that they must be gifted with some god-given ability. But in truth, achieving a high level of skill in competitive gaming is possible for almost anyone. The same way almost anyone can learn to drive a car, because in either case, we're simply learning a skill. We're feeding our brain with information and applying it until it becomes automatic. So how exactly can you learn the skill of competitive gaming? How can you become a godlike player? Well, that's exactly what I'll be exploring in this video. In part 1 of this guide, I broke down the first stages of skill development inspired by Stuart Dreyfus's 5-stage model of skill acquisition. In this video, I'll continue where I left off, demystifying the process of becoming a godlike player and showing how even you can develop a high level of skill and maybe even become a pro. During the first stage of skill development, the one that I like to call the student stage, you learn to open yourself up and master the fundamentals. You developed a strong understanding of the game's many elements and rules. And to do so quickly and to fight off burnouts, you kept things fun and competitive, making a game out of your early lessons. During the scientist stage, you are forced to make your own decisions, no longer just executing actions on the basis of another's rules and maxims, but now creating your own for each unique situation. As a result, your mind absorbed the information of each decision, processing its meaning and emotional weight, then ingraining it into your memory. And with more experience like this, your brain begins to process information faster and faster. Now, you're able to identify important and unimportant elements without even thinking. You instantly match each sequence of the game with familiar past experience, thus allowing you to quickly identify possible decisions and potential outcomes. This is a sign that you've reached the third stage of skill development, what I like to call the optimizer stage. At this point, your main objective is to invest large amounts of time and effort to perfecting your performance and optimizing every decision and every action. By now, you've developed your skill to a point of confidence but you're still making some bad decisions and figuring out how to optimize your skill execution. Using the example of a League of Legends player, you may be able to easily identify an opportunity to all in and get a kill without even thinking about it. You've subconsciously taken into account your enemy's health, their level, their abilities, and their teammates' positioning on the map. As a result, you know you can all in and get the kill, but you don't know the best way to do so. You know you could try to get another poke off before you go all in so he has less health and you have a greater chance of getting the kill. But you know this could be risky because he might suddenly realize that you can now all in him and easily get the kill, which would force him to go back to his base and heal up. Alternatively, you can all in him immediately. You know that you'll probably get the kill, but you'll have to tank at least one or two shots from the turret, making it a bit of a close call. So perhaps you decide to play it safe and poke him once more before you all in. Almost immediately, he starts to head back to his base, meaning that you missed an opportunity to get the kill. Only now do you realize that it probably wasn't the best choice, and if you tried to just kill him, you probably would have succeeded. So at this stage, you'll still make some mistakes in your decision making, but then you'll begin to notice how very similar situations can have subtle differences in which those subtle differences require a completely different response. And those subtle differences will often lie in overlooked aspects like frame data, summoner spells, or talent bonuses. For example, in the previous situation, you realize you could all in your enemy right away or poke down their health a little bit before you commit. What you didn't take into account was that a new minion wave was just arriving, 
Since your enemy saw the wave coming onto their screen right after you hit them, they realized that they could go back to base, heal up, and return to lane without leaving their turret too vulnerable. Similarly, you now realize that since a fresh wave of minions was just arriving, this added a whole new factor to the alternative plan to go all in for the kill. This new wave of minions could have been able to cause enough damage to you while going all in that likely would have led to your death. So despite both plans being fairly good in most scenarios, this one subtle detail threw them both off. Unfortunately, it's easy to miss these important details when we're wrapped up in the game. So the best way to learn about these subtle details and improve your decision making is by reviewing your matches, especially your bad ones. Because it's during your mistakes and during your failures that you can learn the most. And while it may not feel great to lose, you should feel genuinely excited to extract from them valuable insights. So in whatever game you play, don't hesitate to record your games, to review your decision making process, and look for subtle areas where you can improve. But of course, constantly fixating on all your failures can be stressful, so don't forget to review your successes as well. It doesn't really hurt to be aware of your strengths, and sometimes you just need to pat yourself on the back for a job well done. So this stage, your main focus is on optimization. You're constantly optimizing your decision making, reviewing your games to identify small and important details, and honing your execution of specific skills. And since all of your focus is going towards these optimizations, you'll naturally be motivated by getting better instead of winning. Unfortunately, too many players try to force an optimization mindset too early. And if you're still trying to master fundamental rules, then studying frame data, reviewing your games in detail, and spending hours in a bot match won't be much fun. But once you've achieved a high enough level of skill, you'll be naturally attached to your skill development and be playing at a high stakes level. As a result, any hints of improvement and every small optimization will feel extremely rewarding. So pay attention to this and don't force optimization if it begins to strip away your motivation. The result of the three stages we just covered is what Stuart Dreyfus would call an expert. The expert can identify and automatically react to various specific situations and do so with complete precision. Due to their level of experience and practice, the expert knows how to perform the appropriate action in nearly any situation and do so without calculating or comparing alternatives. In their subjective view, they simply just know what to do and then execute it accurately. But in any competitive environment, an expert will discover other experts. This will force them to adapt and continue improving. But at this stage, the expert is already fluent in their execution and they're making great decisions in game, so how can they improve? Well, the answer to this is in further optimization and constant innovation. The first key to this stage is in revisiting the optimization mindset, but this time you're truly optimizing the smallest details. In fact, at this stage, you'll most likely need outside perspectives like coaches or analysts to help you discover subtle weaknesses in your game, so subtle that you would never notice them on your own. And this is why coaches and analysts exist at the highest levels, because at this point in a player's skill development, every small optimization makes a major difference. This forces top level coaches and players to think outside the box in order to find small optimizations that hold huge opportunities and improvements. These small areas often include things like optimizing health, diet, and performance psychology. By optimizing yourself both in-game and out-of-game, you'll not only be able to make small optimizations, but you'll improve just enough to put you ahead of the competition. The second key to this is in innovation. A player at this level is already fluent and effective in their performance, 
So to get an edge on the competition, they need to innovate. They need to develop new strategies and new techniques that the opponent didn't even know was possible. This is why I like to think of an expert more like a linguist or an author. At this stage, they're fluent, effective, and efficient, and well-regarded due to their seemingly natural level of skill. But like an author who's good with language, there's always new ways to combine the words. And when it comes to a skill in the realm of competition, constantly innovating strategies and techniques is required to stay on top. So when you reach this stage, you must create new strategies, new styles, and new techniques. You must optimize yourself, both in the game and outside of the game. And only then will you be able to stay on top and achieve a godlike level of skill. The result of these stages of skill development is a player with the potential to dazzle others with their godlike ability. For others, this skill is like a foreign language that they're just beginning to learn. But to the godlike player, this language is now fluent and easy. For them, the only difficulty is finding unique ways to use it. But much like a godlike player, we can learn this language. We can use the process of skill development to achieve fluency in our game of choice. Then, we can use this fluent skill to make it to the big stage, to inspire those around us, and make everyone believe that our earned skill is some sort of gift from the gods. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. This video is brought to you by our very own esports supplements, eAdvantage. Now the inspiration behind eAdvantage is to help competitive gamers like yourself enter a state of optimal performance, a state where you can play at your best and develop your skills more effectively. And it works by combining six key ingredients that are able to enhance brain function and memory while also helping to reduce fatigue and boost alertness. And what's unique about eAdvantage is that it's not an energy drink or an energy drink powder, it's a supplement. Because while energy drinks are designed for flavor and contain a ton of sugar, sweeteners, and additives, eAdvantage is designed for performance, so it eliminates all the additives and packs only the effective ingredients into a small capsule. So if you're the type of gamer who's serious about your performance, you care about your health, and you desire to reach a state of optimal performance, then check out eAdvantage for yourself. You can find eAdvantage using the link in the descriptions, or you can click right over here. And if you want to get eAdvantage a little bit cheaper, then use the code EATHLETE1 to get 6.5% off your entire order. And as a side note, if you use this code within the next few weeks, it'll also stack with our pre-order sale. So take advantage of this while you can. But as always, I hope you guys loved this video. I hope you got a ton of value from it. And I'll see you all in the next video.